of gray Gray morning, gray evening, gray day Gray faces talking shit on TV What is this? How can I believe in it? Nobody there in who we can trust Tell me please you made this choice for us Tell us outside the stars boxed in cage It's like a leap of steals and now we're blind I hope you're enjoying this ride as much as I am. Uh, I'll tell you something, guys, and I just smelled it so I know they were around. Uh, you know, uh, living in the mountains, you kind of grow up with these ideas. You know, you learn little tricks of, you know, snakes and bears and... But I'll tell you something, guys, if you're ever out hiking on a trail or out doing what I'm doing here and you get the strong, strong smell of cucumbers and you're not eating a cucumber sandwich, back away and just move along because uh, I don't know what it is. And it ain't exactly a cucumber smell, but it's the closest thing. And that smell tells you that there's a copperhead snake somewhere pretty close to where you're at and riding back through there just a minute ago before we hit that low hanging or we didn't hit it but there was a low hanging branch I actually smelled the smell of cucumber and as you can see I don't have a cucumber salad or sandwich in my hand so uh, yeah just you know that's just a little mountain life 101 if you smell that smell and of course, if you hear a baby rattler and you don't have a baby in your vehicle with you or on your back, get away. <laughs> you know, and that's kind of the thing, guys. Is Mother Nature, she will supply you with all these dangerous things, but she will also supply you with ways to dodge and stay away from those dangerous things. But of course, being in the mountains, growing up in the mountains, uh, I'm not big. If I have to, I will. But I'm not big on killing black snakes and king snakes and stuff like that. Any kind of non-poisonous snakes, especially black snakes, because, you know, of course you don't want one living on your porch or in your house with you, and I totally understand that, but 
uh, they kill poisonous snakes and get rid of them. Uh, and of course, old black snakes are harmless. They're never going to bother you. You know, they might quarrel up and look at you crooked, but they can't really do no damage to you. I guess if they bought you, if they hit you, you know, and bit you, they just have little kind of like razor teeth. They don't have fangs. And I guess if they broke the skin, the saliva in their mouth would make you sick. Uh, that's what my dad used to say. He said, it, you know, it won't kill you. It'll just kind of make you sick at your stomach. But I just thought I would jump on here and kind of dabble in being a professor just a little bit. And, you know, if you smell that smell or you hear that sound, just kind of back away. But I, I tell you something, guys, I'm, I'm just enjoying the crap out of this right here. I'm just having a blast on this ride. Uh, again, where I'm, you know, I'm having my most enjoyment, gravel road on my motorcycle. And, and again, guys, this is just me kind of getting the most out of my motorcycle experience, most out of my riding experience. And, of course, I'm moving along in the ride. I actually haven't stopped the took but just one break and then stopped back there and shot the view. But I've been just kind of at a steady pace moving on, and that's fine because you can't do it in a truck sometimes. you got to slow down, and, you know, people's head gets bounced off of the cab <laughs> if you don't slow down. But i tell you something, guys, this has just been a blast. Uh, been a blast. And uh, when my vacation comes up here uh, for, uh, from work, pretty soon I'm going to try to shoot some content and I may the Wednesday of that week I'm going to try to go shoot the tail of the dragon I talked to my brother Jay Moore and he's off work that Wednesday he's off of his work and I invited him and he said he would love to come with me and ride the tail and I tell you something guys I got nothing but mad respect for Jay of course Jay is an electronics wizard I've got him working on my son's laptop right now but Jay is fairly a fairly new biker I think at this time point in this timeline he's been riding a bike all of maybe eight months nine months and guys he didn't start out on the 250 Honda Rebel and, or he didn't start out on a Kawasaki Eliminator 250. Jay started out on a Kawasaki Ninja ZX14, the 1400, the, the one that they call the Busa Killer. Uh, and it's me and him was talking one day at Milkman's shop, Appalachian Mountain Rides, and <coughs> I kind of looked at him and I was like, well, you know, where do you go from here? <laughs> You know, your your beginner bike is a ZX-14, you know, yeah, where do you go from there? <laughs> uh, and, of course, in the cruiser world, he has more options, but in the sport bike world, uh, yeah, you know, you start out on a Kawasaki Ninja 1400, well, yeah, I mean, where do you, <laughs> where, where do you go from there? But... You know, he's just so impressive. He impressed me so much. He, because he bought this bike, guys, from Milkman. Milkman had ended up getting it up in a part of the deal, and the bike had been through a fire. Uh, and when I say a fire, guys, the the wiring harness was melted away, the fairings was melted away, and you know. Jay got a hold of this bike with no more knowledge than riding dirt bikes and four-wheelers and he rewired this bike completely put all new plastics on the bike and made a he made a, a machine he made a machine that he could ride and like I said you know no beginner bike but you know I'm just impressed with him he loves to ride but I think I'm more impressed with the fact that he bought a bike that anybody else would have just parked behind a building somewhere and threw a tarp over and said, yeah, maybe someday I'll try to do something with it. Or they would have parted it out on eBay or Amazon. And he said, no, you know what? I'm going to get the parts. I'm going to rebuild this bike. 
essentially from the ground up and I'm going to learn how to ride it efficiently and it's going to be my very first street bike. I mean, my hats are off, brother. My hats off to you. That's just that's just cool. And Jay's in my friends list and I hope he's watching this video. But you know, that that right there is just tremendous, guys. I mean, but again, he's got a working mind of electronics. You know, working on laptops, build them from ground. He builds computers from the ground up. So he has that mind that where we see a problem that might just be a little bit too much for to fool with. What he sees is just another, you know, another problem that needs to be solved so you can move on. And, you know, he took a bike burn up and turned it into something. Uh, which, you know, Milkman could have done, I could have done, but with no working knowledge of it, Jay took it, and I'm telling you, beautiful bike. He turned it into a beautiful bike. Satin black paint job with chrome accent pieces. Uh, I'll try to get some footage of it one day when I'm at Appalachian Mountain Rides so you guys can see it. But anyway, I've got off track here. Uh, we're still moving through the mountains. So, uh, tell you what guys I'm glad y'all came with me and I, I'm not uh, I also want to add this I'm not trying to be super biker here and impress you guys that I can do these things that I do I just you know I just want you guys to enjoy my content you know and it's not a sacrifice for me to do this because I'm comfortable doing it you know, it's something I grew up doing. It's something I know how to do. So uh, I'm comfortable doing it. I'm not, you know, I, I never would put myself in a situation where I wasn't comfortable just for Southern Ride content. Man, it's getting dark in here. Whew. You're in the mountains, baby. Now the sun has disappeared and shaded. It feels good. Oh, it's good, good. But I would never, you know, try to impress you folks essentially is what I'm saying the, I just I mean my dad started me on motorcycles when I was literally eight years old I was a kid and my first bike wasn't a dirt bike my first bike was a 350 Honda street bike and from that you know I've ridden my entire life uh, and you know, again, it's just one of those things riding on the road like this to me is just second nature. It's something that I can do, and it's something I enjoy doing. I enjoy this. I'm having a blast on this ride. Even if you guys aren't enjoying it or even watching it, I'm having a blast on this ride. But I'm going to find me a place to pull over and partake in a little refreshment here and relax a minute, and then I'm going to head on. So I'll see you guys back on the road. Alright guys, we're back underway. I had to stop there and dabble in a little cold drink. And for my brother John Golden, who's probably watching this video because John watches, you don't see the Mountain Dew, brother, but it's there. <laughs> it's in the backpack on the back. I got the cold Mountain Dew. Don't you ever fear. That's like the American Express card, baby. You never leave home with that. <laughs> Big John. Got to get him out and get him to riding with me some. Looking forward to getting to ride with Big John some. But, uh, you know, I don't know if I'm qualified to do this or anything, but if I'm going to give you pointers for riding your street bike, now not an enduro bike, that's a totally different world, but if you've got a small street bike that's water cooled, that isn't real heavy, and you decide that that's what you want to do, uh, and you've never done it before, uh, you know, your first and second gear bound. And second gear gives you 25, 35 mile, an hour, mile per hour speed. And which is plenty enough to ride through the mountains on, guys. You don't need to be trying to run 45, 50 in the mountains. Uh, I guess the first pointer is to keep your speed low, 
remember you're cruising through the mountains for the enjoyment of the ride and my second tip which would probably be my biggest tip is if you've been watching in this video you have not seen me woo, mud glide you have not seen me touch my front brake at all uh, I control it with the clutch the gears themselves and my rear brake uh, because if you reach and you grab that front brake handle and you jerk back on that thing real hard you know when it's hard to gauge how much pressure you're putting on it on gravel then your front end's going to buckle and come out from an under you and it's going to lay you down so have a liquid cool bike would be tip one tip two if you have to do it just run with your clutch and gears and your rear brake and don't really mess with your front brake at all if you can keep from it you know you can pull your front brake and apply a little bit of pressure but you know kind of like that right there but don't just jerk it to stop and tip number three is be aware of the road you know yeah you're out here you're riding for enjoyment you're riding for the pleasure that you're getting out of the ride itself but pay attention to the road of course if you want to stop and take pictures and look at the views that's fine you know you you're, you're out here to do that very thing holy crap <laughs> oh my god I came back into service range <laughs> Oh, and my cell phone, the Spotify is pulled up. And when you're just listening to your own voice, and all of a sudden George Thorogood busts out with bad to the bone, and your earbuds are turned up, <laughs> I, about, I about laid a golden egg right there. <laughs> oh, crap. Wow. <laughs> But anyway, <laughs> oh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, uh, you know, and you're going to want to, you know, stop and look at those things. But be aware of the road. You know, just look out at the road ahead of you. Do you got to swap over to the left-hand side like this? Uh, rut coming up there, you need to drop back over to the right-hand side of the road. And always be aware when you're on these roads, guys, is there's going to be, you're going to meet cars you know you may not meet a train of cars but you know odds are if it's a beautiful day like it is right now odds are you're going to meet a couple of vehicles <laughs> and you know you got your headlight in the front and your gear and that's pretty well much your visibility that's what makes you visible to other vehicles but uh <laughs> while I try I try to get my heart back under control. <laughs> oh, George, uh, George Thorogood just... <laughs> no, he got the old blood pumping for me. <laughs> oh, he about caused me to lay a golden egg. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Guys, if you can't laugh at yourself, then you're doing it wrong. <laughs> If you, can't, if you can't find humor in yourself, I, I promise you're living your life the wrong way. <laughs> and I laugh at myself all the time, guys. <laughs> oh, George. <laughs> he said, na, 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 and I thought my heart was going to cry. <laughs> Oh, there's a big rut in the road. Okay, you see you see how I just attacked that rut in the road there, guys. I kind of looked at it and assessed where it would be the safest place for my bike to cross it. And another one right here. Okay, so I go to the left. Yep. Looking around the bend to make sure there's no cars coming while I'm eating up the left lane side of the lane. Just be aware. Uh, you know, that's that's all I can tell you that's my main piece of advice is just watch the roads 
watch the gravel watch see these big rutted out spots right here they trees that are across the road wow that one's kind of low but anyhow uh you know <laughs> I, I love it guys I, I i don't know how to explain it other than i just i have a good time doing this i enjoy it even when old George about blows my heart out, I have a good time doing it. And that's another thing about being in the mountains, guys. You get away from technology. You know, and that's, you know, not a bad thing sometimes to unplug from the internet and just see I'm way over to the left because that's a bad rut. Uh, you know, sometimes it don't hurt just to unplug and get out here and ride in the mountains and just enjoy nature. Enjoy what God has provided for free. And just live. Live more than being plugged in all the time. Uh, I think that might be one of our country's biggest problems right now. And of course, I'm telling you that as I'm riding through the mountain recording this on a GoPro. But that's a little bit different because I'm not plugged into anything. But, you know, that might be one of our country's biggest issues right now is, you know, we're raising a generation of kids that don't know anything other than cell phones and tablets and computers and they're always plugged in. And, of course, I put myself in this situation. You know, my son, TJ, he... He loves his electronics, but now I've raised them right. They love riding by their motorcycle and going through the mountains. And anytime there's a chance for them to unplug, my kids would love to unplug and go. Uh, so I, I feel kind of proud that me and Regina have been able to impart that to our kids. That, hey, it's, you know, life's about living, not just existing. And I tell you what, I feel like I'm living right now because I'm uh, old George has got got my heart pumping. <laughs> but I tell you what, guys, I know y'all getting tired of hearing me talk. I'm gonna jump off here and just let y'all enjoy some more of this great ride with me.
right guys as you seen we just came through two pretty good mud holes right there uh, and the thing is I seen some enduro tread on the both spots and I fell into their tread but I have had to ride like that guys uh, and that's why I say if you're going to do this if you just have to do what I'm doing here make sure you got a light motorcycle that don't weigh a lot uh, because I have had to just walk through the mud hole essentially get off of the motorcycle and walk it through the mud hole uh, to get it through and if you ever have to do that on a street bike don't shut off your motorcycle to do it once you get off of it pop it down into first gear and just ease real easy out on the clutch and let the bike pull itself through it that way you're not pushing and killing yourself trying to push it through the mud hole just ease real easy on the clutch and just kind of let it pull itself through the mud hole don't give it a whole lot of throttle just enough to keep it running <clears throat> and again that's just stuff that I've learned years and years ago the hard way uh, and that one mud hole the second one that we went through I actually thought that I may end up having to get off of it there toward the end of the mud hole and push it but thankfully I was able to get my hole going and be able to pass on through so that was luck but yeah I mean that's it guys you just gotta you know you you, you gotta be expecting that stuff like that's gonna happen and you're riding a street bike in the mountains on gravel roads and dirt roads you know you're you're still riding unless you put uh, you know if you put off-road tread on it or dural sport tread on your street bike you're you might be okay but you're still riding essentially I'm riding on street tread so I just have to take that into consideration that it ain't always gonna be just a smooth gentle ride but uh, this is it guys uh, if you made it this far guys drop down hit that like button let me know you made it because essentially I'm coming out down here by the baptizing hole where we shot at on the last episode of the southern ride I, oh man I've enjoyed this ride guys I've enjoyed going through the mountains here and I've enjoyed bringing you guys with me I hope you've enjoyed watching this video as much as I've enjoyed shooting it uh, and don't forget guys like it comment on it share it if you like it it helps throw me into the algorithm on Facebook and on YouTube and if you're on YouTube guys subscribe to the YouTube channel that would be so awesome to help me grow my channel I'm on the road to 500 subscribers and I'm a long ways away from it so I'm hoping to start getting some subscribers on my YouTube channel and the only way I can do that is for you guys to like these videos and put them in the algorithm so people will click on to them and watch them but I tell you what guys what a day this has just been from beginning to end and this has just been a great ride uh, but like I said if you made it this far do all those things and I will see you again soon until the next time guys I am T-Bone and this has been the Southern Ride.